Hi everybody, John here from All Miniatures Great and Small, and today we're going to be continuing our coverage for Heavy Gear Blitz, the new Kickstarter from DreamPod 9. This is going to be an assembly video. We're going to put together a couple of the models, um, take a look at uh, the quality and what we get as a result. So if you like uh, build videos, this is the one for you. If you don't really care, go ahead and skip it. We'll be having more videos for gameplay and painting as we proceed with the Kickstarter. Until then though, let's go ahead and start with assembly. Alright, so before we assemble, we always make sure we have all of our equipment handy. We're going to be working with our heavy gear model here. These are very cool, one, one uh, gear on a frame. Um, so here's the equipment I, I typically use. I have a couple of snips, a plastic snip for taking parts off the frame, and then a metal uh, snip for things like um, paper clips if you're doing any pinning or anything like that. Um, had have had these for about 10 years and they're still sharp and uh, I've abused them all, all different kinds of ways. So those are always important. Uh, then we have a, a nice set of files, uh, a round, a flat, and a triangular. Uh, I think these are old, old Games Workshop ones. I've had them for a long time and they still work great. A sculpting tool, um, it, it just has some good points on it, even if I'm not doing any green stuff. Um, always helpful to have around. Uh, X-Acto knife, obviously you're not going to get very far without an X-Acto knife. Tweezers, and then I have just a regular uh, emery board. Uh, this is useful for filing down um, large areas that can be rough, and then you can maybe finish it off with the more fine um, metal file. And then uh, for glue, I use two kinds of glue. I either have uh, your, your typical um, super glue. I use these more for uh, uh, metal models than anything else. And then I have plastic glue. This is um, Plastruct Plastic Weld. Got it at a hobby store. Um, and basically it's a liquid glue. You brush the glue on with the, the applicator. And that's about it. You'll notice I have it in a cup because I've learned through bitter hard experience uh, having this tip over on my work table and spill onto the model I was working on and completely ruin it. So what I usually do is I put a cup, I don't know if you can see there's some clay in there just to keep it weighed down and hopefully prevent spilling. So there you go, that's the equipment uh, we need to begin building our heavy gear. All right, for this build, we're gonna uh, construct a black mamba. So here is the frame for the black mamba. Uh, it actually tells us there, I think you can read that black mamba. And everything we need is on this frame. So we've got uh, our choice of three legs, so you can put it in a running pose. You have uh, the waist and the upper body, so that builds your torso. You've got three different arm options. Uh, backpack and then you've got um, up here you've got two different head options if you can see that two different head options I think that's a command upgrade maybe an antenna and then over here in this section of the frame we have the weapons rocket pods um, cannons machine guns stuff like that so um, I'm probably still not going to glue the weapons on yet at least the, the rifle uh, because I'm still kind of learning the rules and I don't want to commit myself to a particular model. I like playing WYSIWYG. Alright, so the first thing we're going to do is get all of our parts off of the frame. We're going to be building a Black Mamba, which is a uh, southern mech. Or, or gear, sorry, I guess they're not mechs, they're gears, I know, I know. Uh, a southern gear, it's kind of the medium sized one out of all the ones, there's there's a couple that are bigger, a couple that are smaller, so I thought this was a, a good representative size. Um, what I'm going to use for most of this is my trusty plastic clips. Uh, the plastic clips go in there, on these plastic clips there's a flush side, so that your clip hopefully is nice and smooth, and um, just clip the pieces like that. Now there's going to be some cleanup. There always is. You, you can never clip exactly as close to the 
model as you want. So that's when we go in with a, a knife or um, file in the next step and clean this up. So I'm going to go ahead and clip all this off and then um, we're going to go ahead and go on to the next step. All right, so here we've cut out all the major parts of the Black Mamba. Uh, again, I left the weapons for now on the frame. So they're still um, on my frame right here. Um, that way I don't lose them or misplace them or get different guns for different uh, robots mixed up. So we've got three legs. You can see those here. Uh, again, two standing legs and one running leg. Um, the two standing legs do look like they're left and right, so they only slot in one way. Well, you could glue them in the other way, but it would look crazy. Um, and then this running bended leg looks like it could go either way, so you, you could make them running either way. Um, and you have the lower torso and upper torso, uh, the backpack, which is apparently also the engine, and then one right arm and two left arms. One of the left arms is a little bit more bent than the other. I guess to make a holding gun type pose. You can always tell what arm those are uh, by looking at the thumbs on the hands. They're very tiny, but, but you can see them. And then last but not least, the head. I just used the standard head, not the commander head. So um, now the next step is cleaning these up before you assemble them. So a lot of these will have like we mentioned earlier, um, clipping marks you can kind of see, see right there, right there. You could get away with not doing it, but the model doesn't go together as snug, it's not going to stand as flat, and it's just not going to look quite as good. You might not be able to see them from tabletop distance, but as the builder you'll know they're there, and it will, will drive you crazy if you're like me. So um, basically there's a couple ways to do that. You can use the X-Acto knife and basically, yes I know, I'm I have to blade against my, my thumb. I probably shouldn't do that. but So you could use the X-Acto knife to do that or you could use the file. Whatever works best, and depending on where your uh, flash is, where these little nubs are, you're going to use different uh, tools. X-Acto knife, file, and so on. So basically you go in and you clean all that off. Um, fortunately for these models, there's not a lot um, to do. The, the models are pretty crisp. The, the molds obviously are brand new. Um, and there's only a couple of... Uh, poor points uh, on each piece, so it makes it very easy to clean up. So again, we're going to go ahead and clean up and then be right back. Alright, so we're back. We have gone in with the knife and the file and cut off all the uh, pore marks from the, the frame, all the little nubs. Uh, if there were any mold lines, we tried to hit those with the file or the uh, edge of the X-Acto, but honestly there, there were uh, hardly any um, mold lines on this model. So before we go any further though, just uh, uh, another note, anytime you're building uh, something like this, you need to have a reference handy or instructions. In my last video, we mentioned that uh, the website uh, actually, DreamPod9 actually put out a PDF assembly guide. So I actually have this on my surface and it's always good to have a reference. So um, this is the um, Mamba that we are building, the Black Mamba. So there's the assembled uh, version. And we see a couple of different examples. So this one looks like it's using that running leg. And this one's more of a static pose. Oh no, sorry, that's the iguana over here. That's the Mamba. That's what we're building. Or that one. They also have uh, computer view, we can see that here, of the guy we are building. So we have our reference to know, for example, the first time I built one of these, I wasn't sure in the hips which way was forward, but, but using this as a reference, I can easily tell which way is forward. 
So um, always good to have your reference handy. So I downloaded this PDF, have it on my surface. It sits right here next to my uh, table and I can look at it if I need to. So there you go. Um, all right, now on to the assembly. All right, so next up the assembly. I found it easiest to start with the hips and legs. So I have the, um, the hips piece. You can identify the top uh, of the hip by the uh, big circle. That's where the upper torso, the chest piece goes. And then the bottom has um, slots for the legs. There's pegs on the legs that those, those will slot into. And then this is the front. And we know that because we looked at our handy assembly guide and that is the back. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and use my plastic model glue and I'm gonna glue uh, these legs in. But before I do that, I always like to dry fit. So for example, by dry fitting, I realize this is the right leg. And if I were to put it here, it just doesn't fit at all and that's going to look kind of wonky. So always dry fit once to make sure that you've, um, you've got the right part. So that is my right leg. What I like to do is with my plastic model cement, put a dab of plastic model glue on the hole that we're going to be using and on the part we're going to be using. And then uh, plastic model glue is a little bit different from super glue in that it actually melts the model. It melds the model together. I like his roller blades, very cool. All right, then we're gonna do the same thing for the other leg. Again, I'm going to do the standing more static pose for this guy just so he's not falling over during the assembly process. He's got two legs down on the ground. So we're going to go ahead and put some glue there and on the leg. And even just these few seconds while I'm assembling the leg, uh, it has enough time to soften that plastic and it's going to make it so that we can just slot it in there. Now before it dries, I have to put it on the, the ground and make sure we have a good pose, what we're looking for. And there we go. So um, this particular pose, one of the feet is, oops, one of the feet is actually flat and the other foot is slowly lifting off the ground. So you want to make sure that you have that uh, position nicely on a flat surface. So you can see there what we're going for. Okay. So we're going to let that dry for just a minute or two. Uh, the plastic cement, um, it does take a little while to, to completely glue, but it'll be strong enough for us to continue in just a moment. All right, so now that we have the torso, well, half the torso and the legs glued in and dried, we're ready for the next step, which is atta attaching the upper torso or the chest. Um, so that is this piece you see here and has a big ball for the ball and socket there. So you can pose it different ways with a little tilt up and down if you want. Then it has smaller sockets on the sides for the arms and uh, another ball there up at the top for the head. So, uh, same as before, we're gonna put some glue right here. But you can always keep a handy rag to soak up some of the excess glue out of there. We're gonna give this guy his body kind of a twisted ankle angle from the hips. And you just give it a firm press so that'll stay. Okay, 
Next up, we're gonna do the arms. So I'm gonna use this arm for the right. Give it a little glue there, a little glue where it's gonna attach. And just kind of put it in there at the angle. Maybe he's gonna be raising his gun to shoot. And then of course you always want to play with these. There's only so many permutations of legs um, that you can uh, have on these guys. However, with the kind of the, the ball and socket that they have here, you can come up with different poses uh, quite easily. Then we use the bent arm on the other side just to give them kind of more of an action-y pose. We're going to a little bit there, a little bit there. And maybe he's got this arm out to the side. And lastly, well at least for now, we're going to just add his backpack. So again, we put some glue at that attachment point, some glue there. And it slots into his backpack or as a backpack quite nicely. All right, so I cut out and trimmed, I believe this is a uh, medium auto cannon, which is the kind of default weapon for the Black Mamba, and a rocket pod, which goes on his left shoulder. Um, just to point out, let me zoom in here. To properly mount these guys, we're gonna have to cut the uh, grip off the gun. And oh, you see on this guy, there's a little nub right there that needs to stay on that rocket pod because it slots into, let's get this guy in focus, it slots in right there. So this is going to be fiddly, let me zoom out so we get this guy in focus. You can kind of see the channel there, there's a little channel where that rocket pod nub is gonna go. This might be easier to do um, without the left arm and the backpack on. So if you know what weapons they're gonna have, I'd recommend you um, do those first. So we're gonna put a little bit of glue there. A little glue on the rocket pod itself. And let's see if I can do this and keep it in camera. And there. So we've got the rocket pod in place. All right, next up the gun. With the gun, we're gonna go ahead and trim it. Do a little test fit. So it's going to go something like that. So we need to put a little glue on his hand and forearm, a little glue on the gun itself. Again, that glue starts melting right away. And we are going to line it up. And you want to make sure it looks good and straight from all angles. So 
So there's our pose. Kind of cool. All right, so he looks good. I think we're going to have to call this Black Mamba done as far as assembly goes. Now he does get uh, a hex base. I was reading in the rules, all these medium-sized guys all get hex bases. So you um, have the bases right there. I'm not sure why they gave a slot of bases when obviously there's no nothing to slot. And once you glue them on there, there's going to be holes to cover with your basing. But yeah, not not too bad. Nothing we can't overcome. All right. So before we conclude the video, I'm just going to give you a, a look at scale. So this is the Black Mamba. All right. Here's a, a comparison with. Um, we have a you know your typical Space Marine. So 28 mil. The uh, Spitting Cobra is bigger. The guy we just assembled is pretty comparable in size to a Space Marine. And then the little guy is maybe, I don't know, pretty close as well, but, you know, maybe squat sized. Um, these are from the Robotech uh, miniature RPG game. So um, the larger gear is pretty comparable in size to the mechs you might find in Robotech. So, you know, if you have Robotech or um, Drop Zone Commander or um, even Warhammer, the epic scale, um, you know, these, you could probably all use the same terrain for these and, and so on. So it doesn't look ridiculously um, out of scale to one another. So uh, there you have it. That gives you an idea of the size. These guys can all pose for a group picture. Um, next video, we're going to put some paint on these guys. We'll take a look at the painting them and, and getting them out on the table and then we'll play some games with them so i hope you enjoyed this assembly video again it was my first time i hope you enjoyed it uh, please leave your comments uh, down below subscribe and give us a th thumbs up if you liked what you saw and keep on wargaming